All right, so one thing I've struggled with in this business a lot is um, building a cash buyer's list. So what's the best way to build a cash buyer's list? I've had success generating cash buyers in multiple ways that have really given me some really great results through wholesaling properties to buyers. So number one, Craigslist. This is by far the most common way that you can start generating business. I strongly suggest having a deal under contract before you post on here though. Posting ads um, that say something like, need a buyer for an abandoned house or an investor special, and uploading one generic picture of a boarded up house that you found on Google with no address will just end up getting overlooked by serious buyers because they see these type of ads as all the time. Like when I see that, I just go the other way. Additionally, the people that do call from seeing your ad will likely be under um, other wholesalers looking to co-wholesale your deals and they'll be time wasters. So the correct method to post on Craigslist is to get the deal under contract and know roughly what buyers will pay for before posting it. If you're about to get a property under contract and you don't know what cash buyer will pay for it, then go to Zillow and check what recently sold near it. Um, in this scenario, I like to stay with, within 0.2 miles of the subject how, property and check to see if a realtor listed any other recently sold houses. If, if you go down to price tax history and the source area has either a dash or state's public record, and this is a good indication that it was a cash sale. Although realtors do sell cash to sell cash sell to cash buyers, you need MLS access to get this data. If you want to be absolutely sure that the buyer is an investor, go to the tax assessor site for the that comparable sale and put in the address. If the owner is an LLC, then it's almost guaranteed this is the investor cash price. Post your Post your ad with lots of pictures, a detailed description, and an email as potential buyers can reach you. <laughs> Drops it and breaks it. Is it heavy or does it Yeah, it's up? heavy. Hmm. I think it's just like a, like a replica. So after you verify the cash price, post your ad with lots of pictures, a detailed description, and an email so potential buyers can reach you. I used to list my phone number on Craigslist, but this just resulted in a lot of non-serious buyers wasting my time. If a buyer is serious about purchasing the property, then he'll email you requesting more information. So you don't have to worry about that. If your price is too high, you won't get any emails and you know you need to lower it if you don't get any emails because nobody wants it. Lastly, I would place a lockbox on the property. I do that on all my properties. If it's vacant, so you don't have to go out every time a buyer wants to view it, you can just give them the code. Um, number two, Zillow. The way I use Zillow to generate buyers is similar to Craigslist. The main difference is that you're also dealing with realtors and brokers that may not have a lot of experience working with, the inv with investors, so you need to add some more information in your property uh, description. And follow the steps I previously indicated in the Craigslist portion regarding um, your due diligence because remember you, to post plenty of, don't forget to post plenty of pictures, even if it looks bad inside, it's a cash deal. So a serious buyer has seen it all. They don't care. And more pictures of the home will allow buyers to disqualify themselves. If you have 30 pictures of, and the property looks like a full gut rehab, then the novices or the, the guys that are getting, that are like wait, time wasters won't even waste your time contacting you about, about it. So take my advice on this because your initial instinct is to make that property look appealing but not post unflattering po photos. So by doing this, you'll ultimately end up wasting your time by speaking to a ton of unqualified buyers. In your, dis in your description, um, go ahead and specifically indicate that you are a wholesaler 
and have the property under contract and do not intend to list it, you're not an agent. And even if you are and you're acting as a wholesaler, that's what you are. So I think Zillow notifies agents when an FSBO pops up, which for sale by owners FSBO, um, when it pops up in their area. So a lot of them attempt to reach out and try to get a listing. Uh, by putting that you're a wholesaler or investor in the property description, it eliminates unnecessary phone calls and emails by listing agents that just waste your time. You do want to let realtors know, however, that you're working with, with them. In my descriptions, I like to indicate that if a realtor provides me with a buyer who closes on the home, then they'll receive $500 referral fee. Before offering the fee, just check with your attorney to ensure that you can do this because laws vary by state. In Virginia, you can do that. So if you're new and have no buyers, then I suggest having the phone live rather than sending them to your email. You'll still get the tire kickers or the people that waste your time on Zillow, but they'll be fewer than on Craigslist. Even if a buyer passes on your current deal, you can add them to your CRM and place them on your email list um, or focus your marketing to areas where they're specifically interested. Um, by doing this early in my investment career, I was actually able to get on a get to get a good feel on what areas to focus on and eliminate the zip codes or neighborhoods that buyers didn't want. Uh, number three for your cash buyers list, mailing cash buyers. I do a lot of postcards. This requires a few steps, but will allow you to grow your list the quickest. Um, in the process, you'll gain a greater understanding of your market, generate high quality buyers, um, and just have a lot more success. So firstly, you wanna go to list source. And this is a secret. And identify all of the absentee buyers who bought within the last year and have 100% equity. I'll list the criteria that you should place in list source. So your property type should be a uh, single family resident, equity is 100% to 100%, last market sale date should be one year or six months if you're in an active market, which we kind of are in Hampton Roads. Um, you should list your target areas by zip code. I found that the accuracy is greater in my city by using zip codes. And the owner occupied status should be absentee owned out of state. So I also like eliminating trusts, but make sure you in include corporations because um, a lot of corporations buy houses like this. So once you have these leads, go ahead and buy the list. It should cost you roughly $200 per thousand records. I like to keep the, the duplicates because I'm able to see which buyers have bought multiple properties. Sometimes I don't keep the duplicates because it costs me money, so it's up to you. Once you pay for the list and download your spreadsheet, sort the list by mailing address. Add another column next to the mailing address column and run a formula to identify duplicates based on this perimeter. If you Google how to identify duplicate entries in Excel, this is less than 10 minutes. Once you identify duplicates, click the mailing address duplicate field and only have Excel display duplicates. Using mail ad mailing addresses is the easiest way to identify multi-property buyers because some buyers like to put their properties in different LLCs. So you, you don't know sometimes, but however the, mail, however the mailing address will likely be the same for every entry entity. All right, the goal here is to see which buyers bought multiple times because these are most likely your serious buyers. This will significantly reduce your list size and if you're strapped um, like for cash, this is the best way to only mail the buyers you know are active investors. A lot of people on your cash buyers list may have purchased a house for cash as a vacation home. There's a lot of reasons they could have bought it for a child um, or they're retiring or downsizing. These are retail cash buyers and not actual investors. These are not who you want when you're trying to wholesale or flip. Also, you may want to include LLCs in your mailing list, even if they only bought once. 
Um, as indicated, I, I, as I said before, a single individual may own multiple LLCs and have each property in separate entities. So the final step is to go to a direct mail vendor and send the buyers a postcard. The postcard can simply state that you're an active wholesaler who is doing a lot of off-market discounted deals and looking for buyers. Research cash buyers, buyer, just go ahead and research cash buyer postcards, um, find a template and don't deviate from them. There are active members on bigger pockets who own direct mail shops and have templates specifically designed for mailing cash buyers. You can Google it, you'll find a ton of stuff. Another method that my business partner and I are currently um, experimenting with is looking up the phone numbers for buyers who bought near our subject properties. Phone numbers are great. I'm having some friends have a lot of success with um, cold calling too. So while this particular method hasn't resulted in us wholesaling a deal um, to a buyer yet, I do think it's gonna be a great way to just quickly generate buyers for a deal if you don't have a list. So, so nothing is more unnerving as a newbie than getting a deal under contract and not having a buyer. So if you're currently in this situation, follow the steps that I just talked about um, in the Craigslist and Zillow section for locating buyers near your subject property and go to the white pages or Spokio to locate the phone number and the buyer. If your prospective buyers are LLCs, it makes your job easier because most of these businesses, they'll be listed in local directories. Uh, for example, the yellow pages, and you can go, you can also search the LLC on Google to find a phone number, which is pretty awesome. So LLCs are way easier than people in my, finding individuals in my opinion. So the point I wanna emphasize is that quantity is not necessarily the best thing when it comes to buyers. Um, I have about five serious buyers that I sell to over and over again, and my business thrives off of them. They want deals I have, and, and they'll pay a premium for them. I have a database of about 100 buyers, but um, when I send deals out to my list, those few buyers snag them up quickly because they're the ones doing the most business. So another thing I suggest is to focus on contacting sellers first and get the phone ringing. Uh, you may burn your reputation with the serious buyers if you're calling them and don't have any properties under contract or haven't closed any deals. So I don't know why a lot of real estate uh, educators teach that you should build your buyers list first, um, then contact sellers. We kind of took a different approach when I, when I started um, and it worked out for us. So um, I mailed sellers and got properties under contract without even having a single buyer in my area. So um, if you study your market and pull your cash buyers list on list source, then you'll have a really good idea of where most of them are buying. And this provides you with insight on what zip codes you need to be putting in there and you need to market to. So anyways, I hope these tips were helpful and don't forget to hit that flippin' like button and hit the flippin' subscribe button and uh, don't forget to hit the flippin' bell so you can be notified when I do another one and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks.